Welcome back. Here we are. Here we are. Welcome to the Multiply Your Why podcast, a podcast presented by Missio. Uh, we are uh, two team members from Missio. I am Andrew Spikes, CEO. And my name is Alan Drago, and I'm the Director of Strategy here at Missio. And we're here to just to chat about all things marketing and all things multiplications for uh, faith-driven organizations, churches, um, nonprofits that are mission-driven. And we want to talk about AI. Oh, oh, it can talk about. Yeah, it could be. This could be a hot topic. This is. Yeah, this is either going to go. We're either going to save the world or burn it. I'm not really sure which one we're going to do. No, because. it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Specifically, uh, how are we as a marketing company navigating AI? A lot of people are asking, right? Like, mm -hmm. how are we interpreting AI into the organization, into digital 2023, all of the things um, it's a big topic, especially among uh, creativity, especially among data analysis, especially among uh, writing, like a lot of things that we do. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we've had some thoughts. We wrote down some notes and we're using AI, you know, in some areas, but we're also thinking through it very specifically in other areas. And so this isn't like how you should think about AI, but more so how we think about AI and and all that. And We've each individually nerded out over some cool yeah, AI stuff for sure. over the last few months as the explosion is. And so there's some there's some really, really good thoughts. So AI is it. stands for artificial intelligence. Yes. And the really hype of all this came from Chat GPT. Yep. September ish of last year, I think, is is the right time frame. Has it been that long? Yeah, it's not. I think it's September. I mean, it didn't really make its way I think until twenty twenty three, January, yeah, yeah. February. But uh, officially, I think I saw where it really s launched in September, October of last year. And since then, especially that they did this freemium model, it's taken off. A lot of people have known about it, heard about it, probably gotten scared about it because, oh, it's going to take my job away and all these different things, right? Yeah. Um, to a degree, it has apparently in the market taken some jobs away. It's, it, and we'll continue to reinvent the marketplace. Um it's some pretty crazy stuff. I was talking to my dad about it. Um, I won't belabor this. My dad is not in the know, like, at all. Okay. He is not on it. He's not. Like, love the man to death. He's an incredible guy. He is not the guy to go to to talk about AI. Right. And I was talking to him this not last week. He's not nerding out with me. He's not nerding out with me, no. I was talking to him this last week, and I said, um, I said, Pops, AI, I think, will change the marketplace landscape about 60% of how the internet changed the landscape. Hmm. I stand by that. I The internet changed everything. 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 Changed everything. AI, I think, will make about 60% of that same impact hmm. to the longevity of how the marketplace runs, operates over the next 10, 20, and beyond years. That's a lot. It's a massive amount. I, I stand firm on that. So you either embrace it and adapt to it and figure out what it is, or you're scared and run for the hills. Yeah. And um, so I think, to your point, I think it's really important to, just to hear our perspective as a marketing company mm -hmm. that does this every day. How, what do we think about it? How do we embrace it? Do we embrace it? Do we reject it? So I think it's an awesome topic to talk about. I love it. Let's dive in there. We have some thoughts of pros. There's also, you know, there's cons. Sure. To it. I mean, we literally have pros and cons of uh, of AI. And especially when it comes to uh, a range of things that a marketing company would do. We do data analysis. We also pump out creative content, right? We have all kinds of different facets from the mundane tasks to the not so mundane tasks. Right. And so there's some there's some areas in there, but let's let's dive into the pros and cons. Right. Um, four pros, four cons. Mm -hmm. I'll hit them. I'll hit them and then we can kind of dive into each one of them. We don't have to give them equal attention okay. because, you know, some okay. are more important than others. But the four pros that we would list out mm -hmm. as as pros of AI in digital marketing is enhanced ad targeting. Uh, improved customer experience, and we can kind of talk about that a little bit, uh, better data analysis, and then uh, automation and efficiency on repetitive tasks. And I kind of want to emphasize the repetitive task mm -hmm. portion of that. 
any one of those in particular you want to dive into? Again, we don't have to hit them all. Yeah, I think I'm going to start from my experience. The output of AI is, is really contingent upon your input. So it's a great I, thought. The output of AI is contingent upon its input. So all four of these pros right here are contingent upon how you yeah. leverage it, how you as the individual nurture it, how, how you know, what prompts yeah. you use, what... Um, it's not the silver bullet that everybody thinks it is. Heck no. Yeah. Heck no. I could be an idiot and input something stupid, and this is just trash. Yeah. Right? Or I could be brilliant and have an amazing, logical, thought-through prompt or an approach or strategy to using it, and it comes out really, really good. So mm. I, I think that the approach here, or the sort of the blanket mindset is, is that you know, the output is contingent upon your input. So when we talk about this first one, we'll just go from top to bottom. Enhanced ad targeting. This... This is your world of expertise. I'll take this one. Yeah. yeah. So how are we using it? We're using it as a supplemental point to what we already know. I think that's going to be a resonating factor throughout all the points is the word supplemental. It's supplemental. Yeah. It's a sounding board. Yeah. Because it's hard to, while AI has a lot of, not, when, I, when I talk about AI, I'm talking about chat, GPT, BARD, but then there's all these other ones that are using open AI as other apps and yeah. different things. Like Bing and... Yeah, absolutely. Um, Jasper and some of the other ones, right? They're, um, but it's a supplement to what you already have as an expertise. So am I leaning on AI to do all of my enhanced ad targeting and to come up with a Facebook ads campaign and say, Hey, my target demographic is 40 to 55, you know, males and females, parents have, young, and you give me some crazy. No, I, I have some, some historical knowledge and expertise that I use as a sounding board with the enhan enhanced ad targeting. I've had some examples where they've given me some things I haven't thought of, but they've also given me some things that I'm like, it's a little, novice like i don't know if you really yeah it's not going to get you to where you really want to go yeah you researched the basic of the basic articles pulled in some information and this isn't like this isn't even industry it's standard. not gonna yeah, yeah it's not gonna like game change your business or your organization or church yeah. but it does have some data that you know obviously it pulls from that i think gives you as a as a digital advertiser digital marketer just another lens to look at. Cause a lot of times, you know, you have what you have and you have your perspective. And this is a perspective that I think can, can help adapt or mold to whatever you are starting with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so enhanced ad targeting is a good one. The next one is improved customer experience. Yes. That, take it? yeah, I'll take that. Cause that's an interesting point because people are like, cause there is a con, there is an equal con to the improved customer experience portion uh, that will hit that will hit a little bit later. And the improved customer experience, the good side of AI on the improved customer experience is um, is most vastly seen in something like a chat bot or something like mm -hmm. that, something that can automatically respond and give a specificity to the question or something that somebody is regarding to. So like if on your website, like if you're a business, and and you want somebody to be able to respond like chat having chatbots on a website especially as a business especially a business that sells products you know whatever it is having a chatbot on your site to kind of help people navigate or ask questions or something like that you would have to have a human to do that you would have to have a human on standby all the time all this stuff i used to have a business that sold products and we had a chat and i was the human mm -hmm. on the other side of the phone answering the questions and now to be able to see, oh, I'm going to put all those answered questions, because it was the same questions mm -hmm. every time. That is a point where I would say AI can learn those questions that your customers are asking and better continue to respond based on the data that we input. In fact, there's somebody, I thought this was genius. There's a guy in the in the like design logo. Uh, industry named Chris Doe. He's super, if you're if you're at all relative with that industry, he's big in there. And Chris Doe is creating an AI bot called the Doe Bot, 
And he, I thought this was genius, but he's basically, he's uploading all his YouTube videos, all his blogs, all his content to this AI bot. So that way, if people want to ask Chris Doe a question, the AI bot would be trained in how Chris has been teaching and answering That's questions. Nuts. Isn't that nuts? Yeah. So for the last 10 years, 20 years, he's been teaching content. That, in my opinion, is an improved customer experience because not everybody gets to talk to Chris Doe. Mm -hmm. And so you have this trained AI bot where it's like, hey, here's all my, here's 10 years of my content, blogs, articles, YouTube videos, my courses. This is how I've taught people for 10 years. So you learn what I know and respond to people the way I would have responded to people based on this. Mm -hmm. That I think is a pro. That is a pro. That is a pro. The next one, enhanced data analysis. Um, Take us there. <laughs> <laughs> This one, so I'm going to echo what I did in the first part. I think that based on my experience so far, I've tested this. I've tested seeing, hey, is this like giving me some real analysis? So I'll input a CSV file table type of a, of a list of data to say, hey, what should I do with this? And admittedly, I don't think it's there yet. I haven't gotten a ton, but what it has done is it summarized a few bullets mm -hmm. of in – in sort of a, a language that is readable, right? It's yeah. it's not just data. And I think this helps people who who can't look at a, at data right away and kind of can picture it in their mind. Yeah, they're not Ray Dalio out here. They just can't like, just take a bunch of this and like figure it out. Yeah. Um, so I do think that for maybe um, less experienced data analysts, it, it is probably helpful. Would you say Supplemental. Supplemental. <laughs> I would say supplemental. Yeah, it is supplemental. It is supplemental. It's not going to... But helpful. It's helpful. I, I like to have a sounding board. And right now, I'm just curious to see how this thing works. So I, I think it would be helpful, you know, for uh, for churches or ministries that, you know, they don't have a data analyst on their team. Mm -hmm. And they have... It's a great point. You know, they're like, hey, I've got all these, you know, all this data. I don't really know what to do with it. Should I do anything with it? You could probably leverage it and test it out. And then, but I would just say, look at it through the lens of, you know, it's a suggestion. Yeah. You know, it's not the it's end not all. The end, yes. It's not the end all be all. It's a suggestion. Um, so I, I would, I would lean into that sort of pro from that angle. I love that. Next one. Automation. Uh, yeah, I'll take this one. Automation and efficiency of repetitive tasks. I say repetitive tasks because this is actually going to glide us into what I would consider the cons. And we've kind of touched on it a little bit, but uh, a lot of people are using uh, AI for creative tasks, things like graphic design, like Adobe's done Adobe Firefly, where you could just say, turn it into a winter scene or turn it into blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. Like, I get all that. That's super cool. I mean, I'm like fascinated. Like, Mid journey in the whole, uh, oh man, what is mid journey on Discord? So, like, mid journey is like a thing. So, there's like a lot of creative tasks. Here's what I think it lacks, but why I think it's amazing for um, repetitive tasks, which is, um, I don't think AI is there for, for human touch point and taste when it comes to creativity. So, like, we as a marketing company, don't really use AI almost exclusively to do any like graphic design or anything. Any it, no. We don't do any of it. And that's just because honestly, it just lacks taste and humanity and a huge part of creativity. Now I'm getting into the cons, but I'll, I'll show the pros. A huge part of creativity is emotion and AI doesn't understand emotion. If you can't resonate emotionally, then it's not really creative. And, and so with that, well, we just don't, I don't advocate for it as creative work, but the pro of using AI in automation things that would take forever, like, I can't tell you how many meeting notes do I have just like scrambled up there. I've uploaded so many sections of meeting notes and thoughts like that, where I was like, hey, uh, you know, chat GPT, can you clean these meeting notes up? highlight the points and then outline my next steps based on what I wrote. And it would pump that out. Yeah. It would give me the, Hey, here they are way better formatted. Uh, here's the highlights from that meeting that, that would be emphasized that you repetitively wrote. And then here's your next steps that you wrote down. 
And I was like, oh my gosh, would you put this into, you know, Zoho or whatever and make sure I get these tasks done? Mm -hmm. Things like that. Yeah. Things like that. Or, um, you know, I would take a CSV file of, you know, some, some people we've talked to at trade shows or whatever. I would put that into chat GPT and I would say, chat GPT, organize this in this format, get the like stuff that would take an hour or two. Yeah. Those are things that I think are vastly underestimated in the AI world where it's like, if you know what to ask, and you said this before, if you know what to ask, it can be incredible. It can be incredible. Now, some people are taking it so far as saying, hey, write these emails for me or blah, blah, blah. I've done that before. Again, I don't think it's great. Um, but repetitive tasks. I mean, what did I write down here? Yeah, organizing meeting notes, putting together huge chunks of data analysis. Like that's I did a an one. itinerary one time. You did. I we did, did it. Yeah. We did that itinerary. I was like, so-and-so arrives at this time. You know, this person arrives at this time. We got to be this, this, and this meeting by this time. And we have to leave. And I gave him all the inputs. It gave them. It's, it's a chat GPT. So I gave it all the inputs. Yeah. And it came out with this itinerary, right, of Love when it. we visited when we were in California. We also did one for one of our, um, like, in-person strategy meetings the other day. And I was like, all right, we have to have an agenda, Right, I need 20 minutes here. This is how here. Andrew thinks, by the way. This is here, 30 minutes here. <laughs> da, 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 da. Here are the five objectives we need to do. When you know, give me an outline for when I can, when we should talk about this, and uh, which I, that automation is is awesome. Yeah, it saves so much time because I'm sitting there like, oh, okay, have the parentheses, 30 minutes, and you know, have bullet points and outline thing. It, it's just anyway. So I it helped. I mean, it made me look really organized when, in fact, I spent 30 minutes just giving a bunch of directives and it came out with this polished looking thing. So I love it. Yeah. So automation efficiency of repetitive tasks. Let's go to a few cons and I'll list out the four cons. You take whichever one you want. Okay. The four cons, and I kind of already touched on this first one, is lack of human touch. Hmm. That's an important one. Number two is initial investment and learning curve. That's a very real thing that people are not really talking about. Number three is limited contextual understanding of what you're asking it to do. Number four is pri uh, data privacy and security concerns. That has been hit mainstream media multiple times. But mm -hmm. um, go ahead, uh, pick whichever one you want out of those four. Uh, yeah, I'll start. You know, I think you'll, you'll do really well at the, the human touch one. So I will take, uh, you know, I'll take data privacy and security concerns. Hit that. I'm going to do that one. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this one from the angle larger organizations probably care about this more um, yes. because their impact is much more significant yes. if it was um, handled in the wrong way. Yes. And, I, you know, in my past life, this was a very real deal. Mm -hmm. Like security, um, data privacy, when you think about PII, when you think about, I mean, my world was like GDPR in Europe and, you know, California has its own privacy laws. And so that was the world. And then you think about, hey, I'm uploading customer data to a AI platform. That would never happen. Yeah. It ain't flying. It's not happening. Because then you get, it, it just is not going to happen. Right. Yeah. And so data privacy um, is a concern from that angle. And so it limits what you're willing to or what you should be willing to input. Mm -hmm. So if a large organization is not going to upload you know, 20,000, 50, 100 million pieces of data, um, that's just not going to happen. So I think that that does have its own con um, uh, issues that you have to think through. The other thing is you don't know where the data is going right now because there's no contract between you and, you know, chat GBT or open AI about at a high level business standpoint to know how the data is going to be handled. Yeah. Right. Whereas if you're a large organization, you can have an MSA with, say, Google, an MSA with Facebook. Yep. If you're that large and you can say, hey, do not share my data, you know, even if it's like cookie data or whatever, you can't don't. That's not to be shared. Yeah. Whereas you can't have that same level of contractual agreements with these AI tools. And and so that is the thing because you don't know where it's going to be. They're definitely reusing it. Oh, yeah. That's and the whole point of the whole thing. Yes. And so it's like, what do you. What are you willing for them to reuse? 
Yes. And so that's that's the angle. I don't know if you have anything to add on that, but that's the angle that I would take on it. Yeah, I think from just from a practical span, standpoint of what this looks like, um, like here's here's where I get slightly terrified of the data and security. Not not because of the AI itself, it's because of things like so like you had mentioned big companies being terrified of this. Like imagine like AI having access to like Disney's creative vault and how Disney creates content. And then they end up recreating that for another person, but it was Disney's unique IP that they own. Now you're putting out content that's Disney's IP. You could get tremendously sued for that. Mm -hmm. I know there's things like blockchain and stuff like that that's on the rise. It's like, you know, trying to put blockchains on IP and stuff like that. But that's that's a concern to another different level. Like, I've, ta I've talked a couple times. I, I like to write a lot. Say I'm writing a blog post or a book or, or whatever, things like that. If I input a blog post or whatever about marketing into, into chat GPT and I'm like, hey, can you, you know, tweak this up, make this sound, whatever, better uh, adjust this, blah, blah, blah. It could make some adjustments, add some sentences that unbeknownst to me, somebody had, else had already written. Yeah. You know, it could be tweaked, taken from another blog, taken from another book. And I've stolen some author's unique writing, whether it's covered by IP or not, whether it's copyrighted or anything like that. I've taken somebody's writing. Yeah. And I can't publish that. Right. I can't publish that book. I can't publish that blog. Like that is... That is a big concern for me, and that that kind of taps into that kind of taps into the whole reason of creativity and things like that. I can navigate that over to lack of human touch. I'm going to take yeah. That let's one. go that one. Lack of human touch is um, that's one I, I definitely want to hit. I read a phenomenal Medium article by Ryan Holiday, one of my favorite authors. He's written books like um, Stillness is the Key, Courage is Calling. Des, uh, discipline is destiny, things like that. Big New York Times author, bestseller. And he wrote an article on um, how he tested using AI as a research assistant for his books. Where, you know, because for a research assistant, you would say, read these 15 books and try and get um, some kind of nugget to help me research to build arguments for my book. You know, that's what research assistants do. You read 15, 30, 45 books, whatever it is. You're like, oh, that's a great story. We could highlight that to mm -hmm. all that stuff. And what he found was that AI was significantly worse than all of his research assistants in the sense that it didn't have any taste or discernment mm. to emotional connection. It was all black and white. Yes. It was like data. Think this is good. <laughs> okay. This should be good. Right. I think good. Right. And <laughs> And, and he was like, I can't use any of this. This is trash. This, this doesn't stir me emotionally at all. This is just a snippet of whatever. And so AI was just giving him this very black and white, and he couldn't use any of it because it didn't have taste or discernment. And I think that's the lack of human touch point where mm -hmm. it's like, I'm, I'm not at a point to where I would have it right or design, or do anything that needs to create an emotional connection, which all creativity does. Um, yeah, I might have it, you know, automate some of my tasks, meeting notes, and things like that, but I wouldn't use it to make something. No, I agree. I think that goes, I'm going to skip to the third bullet point, which is limited contextual understanding. Oh, that's great. Because that's what it is, yeah. right? It's, there is a, a contextual piece here that humans have from perception that, they perceive things, they interpret things a certain way. There's emotional built, built into it that you can't communicate all of that yeah. in an AI tool. And I've tried. I was like, yeah. I have, I have <laughs> On tried. this date with this right. people. <laughs> Think of it from the approach of an emotional, you know, flower. And like, you know, like I've tried what to like. were you writing? I don't know. <laughs> it was, I was really testing it to see, uh, oh my to God. figure out what it could be. You, know, um, you, you know, I am this, I work here. You are my, this, this is what I'm trying to accomplish. And I'm trying to like, I, it still misses it, you know, and yeah. it does not have the context that we as humans have, um, especially in the background of a scenario. So if we were to use AI as a company and I have one year, you know, experience in working with a client or yeah. you're an employee working for an employer, you can't take a year's worth of your history and experience and dump that into a 
chat GBT it's or bar work. prompt. Yeah. Right. And so the context is missing. Um, and so that's, that's, that would be my angle on it. I've even had it try to, to your point around emails, write an email within this personality type. Yes. And it still misses it. Now it'll get 60% there. Right. But then you got it. You're like, you know, how much do I need to rewrite? What's it worth? Da, 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 da. Yeah. So anyway, that would be my take on the limited contextual piece. I think that's, I think that's a great, I think that's a great one to know. And, and maybe we should have emphasized this at the, at the beginning, but we are not like AI experts by any means. This is like our personal. Yeah, please don't sue us. Yeah. This is our personal experience of pros and cons trying to use AI as a marketing company in you, you don't know. make a billion dollar decision yeah. based on this podcast. Also, don't tell us in the comments. <laughs> don't, please don't tell us in the comments. <laughs> but anyway, no, do comment, chat with us. But yeah, we're not we're not experts. All right, last last one, and then I'll wrap us up. Let's do it. Um, is initial investment and learning curve. Let's talk about that because that's that's a thing that is people think. All right, I'm going to go to OpenAI's website. I'm going to open up ChatGPT and I'm going to start firing off stuff and it's going to be my silver bullet. And I'm like, not, not how it works, amigo. No. That's not how it works. Where you had said this pretty early on where the quality of the answer is highly dependent on the quality of the question, mm -hmm. the prompt per se, what you put in there. And so you have to take time to understand how does OpenAI or Google Bard or any of these guys, how does it respond best? What do you need to write to give it better information? And there's already people, there's, I've seen this all over like Twitter and Instagram where people are like already putting out courses. Yeah, here's 50 prompts yeah, that here, are proven. To, yeah, proven right, prompts. All right. oh, this, you know, We're like, proven for one month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been around, but we've barely been around. But there, I mean, there's people putting in, hours every single day um teaching you they're literally teaching you how to put in good prompts and how to understand and better break down the data and all this stuff i mean it's that there is a learning curve there's this, a learning curve to say the least and and so you can't just jump it it's like any other skill using ai is in in what i would consider like if you were to pick up Photoshop today and say, I'm going to learn Photoshop, that is no different than saying, I'm going to pick up OpenAI, I'm going to pick up Google Bard, and I'm going to start to learn how, we, how I can use it. It takes skill. It takes time. It takes understanding. And it takes context for how it responds. And that is a downfall because a lot of people just aren't willing to put in the time to learn how to use it. I mean, you can get basic stuff. You can get basic stuff if you're like, I need a vegetarian diet that doesn't exceed 1800 calories a day and I need it to be healthy food or whatever. You can get basic stuff like that, but it, you're not, you're not hitting mm -hmm. thousands of hours of save time and great information unless you're willing to put in the time to learn how to prompt, yeah. uh, to learn how to input data, to learn how to add context and all those things. So in open, if you're a business open and you're trying to integrate this into your technology as the, at the business level, there's obviously a cost of that. OpenAI is, is there's a there's a ChatGPT free version of it that most people know about. Their Bard's free. Yeah. As a user, but as a business, you have to start paying OpenAI. Yeah. yeah. It's, what, is it like fifty bucks a user, right? So that part is. I mean, I paid for that one. Just that's like ChatGPT four or whatever. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But there, the OpenAI has like sells its technology to different. That's how all these companies. Um, are like Jasper integrating and all those guys yeah. integrating these AI tech because they pay them on a per usage basis, mm -hmm. not necessarily on a seat, but on the data, right? And because uh, I've I've looked into it, like how much would it cost to build this software? And you've got to, I mean, it's it's a technology. It's almost like buying AWS, right, for storage yeah. space. That makes sense. You know, you're you're paying for AI yeah. artificial intelligence, so it, it costs. But overall. I mean, we're learning. We're, we're figuring learning, it out. Testing. Curious. Yeah. Be uh, curious. Don't be scared. Yeah. And honestly, we'd love to hear your thoughts because you're learning this as much as we're learning this. So so drop your thoughts in the comments. What what do you like about AI? What's a pro about AI? What's a con about AI? What have you learned? We'd love to hear it. But you want to wrap us up? Yeah. We have really enjoyed hanging out with you. Mm -hmm.